has a system of science, a code, and a code. Device by human Shaka to capture knowledge and understanding. Because similar to the uh, higher level physics cannot be done without higher level mathematics. It can be made sense of because it is encoded in this system of science. Today, the uh, people who are scientists are working with quantum, or some economic matter, or genetics. They, will be, they cannot manage without statistics. Very abstract statistics. That is, that is your thing can be understood only because they are that sort of that is the way we started understanding, making sense of it, devising uh, uh, a system is a way of making sense. I give you a very simple example. There are uh, tribes, tribal societies, even now, where small tribes, they can hunt a chicken or both. One, two, three. And I suggest that it is not because they have lesser brains than us, but because nobody has devised arithmetic. And arithmetic is the logic of add one, add one, add one, you are the guy of the sequence. And you have a logic to it. Yeah. And when you have the code of arithmetic, then you can grasp 20, 50, 10,000, whatever. So I'm suggesting that that is what human language is. Human language. The code by which we make sense of the world. And therefore, necessarily, the child who arrives in this world needs the code, has to learn the code as a way of learning about the reality. It comes in a part. Any more than in beautiful notes, I have a higher mathematics. They are not going to understand anything about uh, uh, cosmic phenomena, uh, uh, or higher uh, physics, or planetary astronomy. There are, there are things in my skin which can only be understood in there, scientists can only understand it. If you type it as an equation symbolically, put it in English and it knows that it doesn't make sense. Einstein wrote his most profound things as equations, not papers. Still how to access a certain energy. That is to say, if that is how you have to conceptualize it and grasp it, 
then that is intermediate to be taken for Jesus. So, let me languages are there, somebody has devised them. So the new, a newborn child has to get the, get the knowledge through the board, board the board team. So that is how I see magic And that is, I think, why every human child knows the mother. Learns the mother. Because for the child to be able to make sense of anything, the environment, the parents, the world, there needs to be a conceptual system. This is it. That is, it is already there, so parents are speaking it, other people are speaking it. So the code is also a human body, too. Yeah. So it learns the code and through the code, or although two simultaneous. Now that probably explains why a child can learn simultaneously two or three languages as a mother tells. We don't do one. So when you say L1, it is not one. It's the first language. We can be more than one. Yes. Um, <clears throat> that is why we find immigrants who go to live with another country, another immigrant area, seem to pick up the language.
Frikslek. When they grow up, they go different ways. <laughs> Some people you know, continue to read novels, others the find and just newspapers, others to talk about it. Now, the word for story, reading, or listening to story, if you go into another environment, Similar to same intention, similar to you are making sense of the real world. You know, Jacob Rowley has increased in knowledge of English in the world phenomenally. Yes. Because it is really a different world. A lot of grand order of man. He was the seventh of eight. And would wait for the next Harry Potter, same day of our kid, but he did it again and again and again. And, and she made me read it because she wanted someone to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Now, when she went to a Chelsea College in Delhi with a real student master's, then uh, and while she was doing that, she wrote uh, two novels that were published by uh, Andy, 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 and she She decided she would teach in teaching and uh, in, in the, 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 the most um, uh, lucrative teaching, job friendly teacher in international schools. <laughs> so she, in a year's course, was very uh, suited to international schools. So she is in. When they, when they get into all of these things, they apply all of the Once a year, looks down. Grandpa, how are you? Okay, now, Harry Potter is studying. And similar to and you will remember. My high school was all in color and English. And English. I mean, it's a subject, yes. But where did I learn? In the day. In the high school. And I still vividly remember the day. Pleasure, Quentin Dover, and various other things. My home was a very rural place. So I sat under the coconut tree. But I remember getting into that world. It gave me 
be what an English medium of education would have given us. So, the word of fiction, the imaginary world, also is a source. Sometimes your hobby, your professional interest, yeah. if there is something there, you can go from no English to internationally proficient English by playing the game. That's what cricket did. Be. Because cricket, the whole game, It happens in English. The world over and etc. So and and if you get into India then you know what? Yeah. So you are absorbed in it. Because you are absorbed in cricket, automatically to something English. I remember clearly remember the country in the other days. They should lose you cricket in India. Now, you don't notice a better example. That is, that's what happens. It, what happens is similar to what happens with Harry Potter. When you are absorbed in something else, yeah. then you making sense of that and so on, you begin to think about it in that language and therefore in another language. Okay, that's one first point. And incidentally, uh, from that point of view, one right, where we went wrong was fundamentally assuming that the, the language is new and the content is also new, it is far too much of a burden. How will anybody learn it? Therefore, we went on to say that the language will be new. But the content will be familiar. Right? But if the content is familiar, the content is familiar in in some language. But the, that too has been made sense of in linguistic terms. And that's the mother term. So for the child, what she already knows in the mother tongue, she now asks what it is. Yeah. And you know, can you bring the child to say the child already knows what it is in some place? Mother tongue is a very valid yeah, I think we've been very unfair to mother tongue. Okay, point number two. That's the first point number one was about learning. Now point number two is about teaching. Learning results from the learner's successful effort to make sense. That is to say, Okay, effort is being But then it's you must let me know the camera. All learning, certainly language learning, but I think gambling. What is to be to be to be internalized? You have to engage with it. You have to make an effort. It's a mental effort. And what you acquire is, when, is the result of your effort. Then it is something that you have added. So when you acquire 
try in time to understand something. The light process. You acquire some part of the language in that world. Then you have acquired a it by the effort of trying to understand. And a very successful effort ever has added to your knowledge, to your learning, to your knowledge. Now, what do I do say successful effort? Because there are bound, there is bound to be unsuccessful. If it is never unsuccessful, there is no effort. Any effort that is guaranteed to be successful is not an effort. There is no effort. We are just pretending. And where you have, where you have to make an effort is necessarily when you can't be sure whether you will succeed or not. So, it could have been unsuccessful, but it was successful. Sometimes it will be unsuccessful. Similarly, if you are always successful in your, in your effort, you are not making an effort. Here, here, here. You already know it. Anything that you can do without effort, without, I mean, anything that you always succeed in, you're not learning anything. You are, you're not learning. You are, you're not learning language to buy in your any content. I mean, when you know the language, you can learn a lot of knowledge, a lot of knowledge through the language that you know. And as far as the language is concerned, if you read it, you will understand it. There may be other reasons why you find it difficult to read. So you can add to your knowledge when you know the language. But language learning is adding to your knowledge of the language, adding to your language in the process of adding your knowledge. So, and then we are talking about learners. So, successful effort. And, and for it to be really effort, it, it must involve the risk of failure. So, teaching them is the skill of not to be like designing your jobs. <laughs> <laughs> teaching is the skill of guessing.
is the essential task basically to do. A task is something that makes learners make an effort. And the teacher sets a task. Now, how do you know that this will be an adequate, an appropriate task? You don't. But you set some task and see what happens. You can get the right way out of the day and marking the task. What is generally about the class? What was the success? <coughs> or what is Somewhere in between is something you have to be taken care of more. In setting the next task, I say the next, I don't mean literally next, teacher from me, who is all the time every day to ask me that. But I mean the next, subsequent. Next task, you now have an indication that task turned out to be to which the problem. And again, make a rough measurement. Level of success. It's, it's like uh, you know, weighing things. You know, it's too uh, heavy, too light, etc. And sort of it will come to a balance. So it is by trial and error. Which sort of review? Otherwise, it cannot be. You and so that what is happening is the teacher by by each act of teaching is learning to teach. What better? A profession whose practice trains Give up this, we can 
What happens in terms of what I described is uh, not one of the market. Second language. to be possible. You need to wait 
Depende, ¿no? Depende, depende por día del caso que tiene. Now, somebody will ask, can, can, can you afford to wait that time? My answer is, if you can't, what do you suggest we do? If we have to wait for Five years before I send my child to school, can I afford to wait five years? Isn't it better to send a one-year-old child to school? I say four years. This question is similar. And what do these languages care about if it is specially suggested? Therefore, we teach production. Two things. Number one, you are not teaching production. You are treating the child as a parent. Secondly, by wasting time on this activity, to that extent you are reducing comprehension. When a learner is ready for production, he will not, she will not wait for you to ask. We know when a child, when a child begins to speak in the mother tongue, there is such a pleasure, such a delight in it that, you know, chirping, 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 chirping. So, we don't have to Worry about that. He tells you that he is this level that it becomes visible in this form. Not production. Now, there is a serious question though. What do we do? want to teach English, we want them to be able to speak and write, not just understand, listen and read. What can we do? Well, you can do what you have to do. Yeah. If you think parity is good enough, but Chances are, at what stage is it best to come? Basically, if you ask children in the, in the English class to speak, they will. But they will draw their budget. Then we sort of project it into problem. <coughs> when you see the influence in the mother tongue, what it indicates is that you ask them to produce an English prematurely. Of course, if you have to produce them, they produce what they have at that level. Now, of the four, of the two skills, production comes later and the when sorry when the child draws in the mother tongue or with quarters and errors now when that happens Um, what you do is teach, teach grammar, <coughs> analyze the errors and 
Insufficient growth. If we have to use medication, at least do it at the end of whatever is teaching of the language that you are able to do, that is in your power to do. At the end, because your reward is not wasted any of the time earlier from comprehension. And you have to repair your do the best repair job you can. But not pretend that's teaching language. That's repair. Respectable. So I I the role of them I'm not saying drama has no role. Drama has the same kind of role that meditation has, which is a respectable thing. When the health fails. But the priority should be to maintain the health. The more you are able to reduce the need for medication, the better. The, the more you can delay grammar teaching, the better. Next point, task-based teaching. Not task-based, texts. Tasks based on texts, text-based. The agenda of all skills, uh, cooperation and production, and uh, speech and writing. The speech and writing doesn't really capture what I have in mind here, although it is the media. What I have in mind is spoken language versus written language. <laughs> that is to say, speech versus text. That is not just a matter of whether the medium is sound or symbol on the paper. It's much more. There's a British linguist called Michael Hilde, who wrote a book in the 1970s. Language is social semiotic. Uh, and learning yeah, how to read. And learning how to read. Language is spoken and written language. Yes, it's spoken a third. A small book. Yeah, yeah, it's a third. Where well, they showed it, I mean, put it on the front. I'm not sort of relying on that authority now. Yeah, that, that's what seemed to suddenly give shape to what I had in mind. He says sentences have structure, grammatical structure. Texts have texture. Yes. In addition to Texture is, just as a sentence is a, a, a 
weaving together of words dramatically, a text is a weaving together of thoughts, content, information, facts. Weaving together, fusing together into a piece of knowledge. A text is a piece of knowledge. A sentence is an illustration of the language. I don't know, I don't know if you have you ever seen a speech of an educated person and record it and wait for you transcribe. for communication. Can you do it? Very difficult. You just can't. It will, it will look like the man is deluded who spoke this. You do it with mastery and appear as a lunatic. That is to say, As you would have noticed, I repeat myself, I say in one sentence what I will be partly said in the last sentence, etc., 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 and I go back and forth. A text is a sort of non redundant condensation with a logic, semantic logic. That is what a text is. Therefore, a text is, it represents language, but it represents much more than that. It represents uh, it was in terms of comprehension. Comprehension of sentences is far, far easier than comprehension of text. Far more challenging. Comprehension of text. Because it is condensed meaning. And there lies an opportunity for teaching. Because if it's a condensed block, then understanding it calls for effort. And the effort can be regulated. And that effort is engagement with the language and the content. That is what Reading comprehension questions should be like. Inviting learners to make an effort to interpret and understand, which may or may not succeed. Similar. And, and this can be very easy. Actual things, etc., etc. It is very little and very little challenge. Understanding to know enough of the language. Means the depending on interpreting the sentence. <coughs> but texts have depth, inferential comprehension. And because the text condenses meaning, there are things to infer and inferential. And that is challenging comprehension, challenging comprehension questions. That what I mentioned in this reading yesterday. That's exactly what I discovered by doing it as absolute. And that is 
excellent preoccupation with language and meaning simultaneously. Sort of uh, open up the one by opening up the other. So, living comprehension, which it would be text based task, provided the, the tasks are uh, appropriate, uh, offered appropriately, the challenges. Effort to effort. So that is the thing that mixing with the educational ethos, texts are respectively. I'm very glad they still are. And texts have many kinds of doesn't matter. A previous text, a knowledge. Narrative, whatever. And you can sort of see that it being discussed etc. etc. Some are easier than others, and you can choose. But the most important thing is Christian. Then Christian. It takes time, it takes a lot of things. I told you it's very easy. I enjoy it. It interrupt me. Three more questions in an hour. I was satisfied. Takes time. But that's not a criticism of the desirable. Then you can make the teacher's job easier by offering them the job of choosing, selecting rather than concept. That's easy. And I think this text-based task feeds into production in writing. I don't know if you have talking about text attention. There's a Michael Hoy who was a Babylon Jesus Christ. And he was a student of my Eugene Winter. And they really focused on Winter in particular, focused on Repetitions that appear in text, etc., etc. All of them indicate if you have to repeat something when you are writing a paragraph, refer to the same thing, you don't just repeat. Automatically, you word it differently to some extent. Same thing, refer to it differently. That's just the same, the same thing, a rule in writing, not in speech. And therefore, perceiving that this is the same as that is a, is a task for comprehension, is a task of comprehension. Under British So, I think reading comprehension fits in with the educational ethos. Is extremely beneficial and the teacher's effort can be supported. And uh, something I don't know why we don't. In fact, that's what on the CIE book, Language to Literature, came up. I like the idea of text being a basis, not a lot than sentences. But they seem to mind it so little that uh, I was disappointed.
So I start off. <clears throat> you are suggesting that. Yeah. Sir, hello. Yeah. Uh, sir, you, I mean, mind boggling. You are suggesting that when a child learns the mother tongue, it is because it's trying to use the word to make sense of the world. And it invariably happens across the spectrum, and it happens in a similar way, and it happens uh, in some sense uh, adequately across the spectrum. Now, when we, as teachers who are teaching another language, you are saying that we have to create a context for them to use the word to make sense of the world again. Now, are we not dealing with the same world, I mean in a broader sense, but with a different word? Are we not, are we, we do, I mean when you say they'll, we'll have to give them enough time to use comprehension before they go for production in the new word, are we suggesting that all comprehension will begin anew, like they were ignorant, or can we assume that knowledge of the world is there with the child, and what knowledge of the world should we focus on as a teacher of an additional language? Yeah. Now, the child's acquisition the mother tongue is a unique thing. You cannot repeat it. But you can approach it. Now, and I'm saying, therefore, that our best bet in teach the second language is to make the most, uh, the best approach, the nearest approach to what happens there. That's what I'm saying. Now, one reason why it is unique is that the word, what you said, has been made sense of in the mother tongue. Now, but there may be some aspect, some area, where the same kind of making sense, that's what I was saying, immigrants, new culture, new place, world of fiction, okay. and knowledge, science, etc., etc., which you didn't know before. Anything that you didn't know before, the fact that child has understood, knows the understanding of the word for the, for the mother tongue, doesn't mean that. No, the other areas of knowledge. And I was saying one reason why one reason 
how we can move towards that is by using these areas where there is new knowledge. I'll come back a little later. There may be a few questions on the back. Related to comprehension and protection. Uh, today I had a better comprehension on this uh, area, but uh, still I have a question on this. Uh, when it comes to comprehension, it is like uh, uh, we are reading so many different genres like poem, uh, drama, novel. So it is like traveling in different modes of transport, like traveling in flight, traveling in train, traveling in bus. So that time the readers are more comfortable to travel in all this. But whereas when it comes to protection, so I, the readers are crippled. So all of a sudden it places the reader in the place of the cockpit, in the place of a pilot. So that, that much difficulty is the reader when it comes to protection, they, they feel, they have, they experience. So this gap, how it can be bridged, whether by constant practice, whether this gap can be bridged. In, in terms of writing and speaking. You are saying can protection be a means of increasing acquisition? I don't know how to interpret your question. Um, I, I mean, protection means writing and speaking. Of course. Yes. Yeah. And different genres. Yeah. So, different genres. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you have there are different kinds of text. Yeah. And they need to be interpreted. They can be interpreted. <coughs> so, you can set tasks of interpretation. Yeah. <coughs> Whether it's a dialogue or whatever else. That text. So they can be used for comprehension. Yeah. And it's better to use a variety of genres. Okay. Now, then you would turn to say whether, why not do this to what? Production. She's in practice. So I think her problem was that she said they are able to read and understand. The image she used was that when they're reading a poem, they are like a traveler. They are like travelers in a bus or a plane, yeah. where it's okay. But see, you said that when they write, it is as though they are in the cockpit or in the driver's seat. But you're not thinking of the cockpit or the driver's seat as writing a poem or writing a play. It is about writing, about or speaking about the poem. It's about the journey. Millions of people appreciate Shakespeare. How many can produce <laughs> You don't need to do that. Uh, what to produce depends on our knowledge. I have a question on the page. So, I'm Nivedita Lopoza. Yeah, thanks. So, I'm Nivedita Lopoza. I come from Manilo. Now, I've been teaching in a Hello. Hello, fellow. That's why I said
again from the loss. So I think what you said about using your text it's to perfect. teach maybe even grammar, I think should be the way it should go about. Because when they have sentences, sir, they don't realize it's like when I was studying, I was a science student. Physics went all like this and like this. Never improved this because I never understood applicable. Like how can I apply this? So I think uh, doing it through the you know the passages or the text method, I also feel sir, is the best method of teaching anything. Maybe the uh, fastest method towards production. Like I mean, I'm too small to say no, things no, no. because I'm in great awe of you and a lot of respect for you, sir. I took on task page without realizing this is called task page. <laughs> <laughs> Tertiary level education focus on comprehension or repairing the production? Tertiary level education. Tertiary level education. Should it focus on comprehension or repairing production? Yeah. Actually, primary, secondary, tertiary. Tertiary level education. Labeling. Labeling. Yeah. No, no, no. Organizational thing. questions which push the students will enable better comprehension, will lead to production. Now, I'm asking this maybe deliberately as a devil's advocate that one of the major arguments that we've heard about quote-unquote authentic materials is that when I go to a text to read, I don't ever ask or answer comprehension questions for myself because I know why I'm going to that text. And in that sense, should all of us then as teachers accept, acknowledge openly that every question we create for the student may be an artificial one. The student may or may not want to do that with the text, but we will have to make them do it 
to help them comprehend better and help them grow. You know, there's this being suspension of disbelief where they, we tell them, okay, here is this text, now answer these questions. So why do you say artificial? Answering questions is an artificial procedure. But that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. I was just checking. But this is one of the major issues we hear. Therefore, you know, we pretended to, and I'm saying it pretended because we've been given these uh, entertainment columns and then said, imagine that you are so and so and therefore you want to choose to dance or one film that you want to see, which one will you choose? And then we pretend that it is authentic. Anyway, it is artificial. Right, and so, so all of CLT in a sense, which is meant to be genuine and authentic, I have seen as artificial, but I was just taking that next step forward. So would we then acknowledge that, yes, children ask questions. We ask questions of anything we don't understand. So comprehension questions are of the same nature. This is just a, a clarification and charity for us more than anything else. But I don't see, I don't see much more that was demanding that classroom procedure, procedure from in some way uh, similar to real life procedure. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. No, that's not possible. But teaching. Exactly. That's what I thought. This is why I wanted that clarity for everyone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is sharing a lot of uh, curiosity. Production follows comprehension. I think it's uh, very clear and we all agree to that in the premises. Sometimes, in certain cases, the uh, production is much faster. The comprehension time, I do not know whether it depends on the kind of task or the kind of behavior. To be more precise, I'm just looking at, let's take the uh, Alias Fonse or Gote or some such a foreign language institute. Yeah. They learn in six months, ten months, and they are able to comfortably operate quite well in the native country's context, express themselves for their basic needs. What kind of a comprehension would have taken place there, where he, after 11 years, have not been able to do that comprehension to follow what would take the production? for food, how to do this, how to do that, exactly. <laughs>
Hello sir, I am Naveen Daiz from Mangalore. Uh, sir, we generally believe that the child has, a, has an innate ability to learn a language. Sorry? We generally believe that the child has got an innate ability, inbuilt ability to yeah. learn a language. Yeah. First language. So therefore the child is quick enough to learn the first language. But when it comes to second language, does this inbuilt ability or innate ability Diminish the child of that's the question. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the myths. That various myths have come up in the project. The, the innate ability is not a myth. The innate ability is available only for the mother tongue and not for any subsidiary language. 
is a way. That is the city of way of explaining the way when we are in the second language. Yes. Okay. Time has a mix, time has a religion of it. But it's not a special way, special ability. The child has a mind. And wish to understand things around it. You will see, you will see the the uh, uh, the car, the car exploring, but the human being has a has much more there. So the child is trying to make sense. All animals do more. They explore. They try and they get from here to there. For a human being, there is much larger world and a world that humans have created, etc., etc., etc. And correspondingly, greater capacity to try to, to comprehend. That's all. That's available for anything. As I said, they know science. Scientists use statistics and symbolic language of different kinds to understand natural phenomena. Yeah. They want to uh, understand it. Yeah. And this natural language, it has not been done in the natural language. So there is a some scientists create a chicken. Newton apparently created this mathematical form of cal calculus, mathematics called right. calculus. Newton created it because for what his mind said the universe is like, there was no system to express it. So it created a system. I'm telling you, so what I'm saying is, just a Newton made calculus, some ancestor of ours, so many million years ago, evolutionary process, yes, they made this language, and it, it's a language is born when two things happen. One mind finds a way of articulating, finds a way of, no, not articulation, I don't mean it. Uh, okay. Coming to terms. Uh, making sense of symbolizing. Symbolizing, yes. Okay. And, and there is at least one other. Who, who articulates it in the same way. Then they have the used common system. Then in third and in fourth, you get a language community. One says the language community, one says the who. It becomes a language. So, in that context, I just want to know whether the acquisition of language does it depend on the number of social con contexts that we provide for example? Who provides? Social context. The way we provide the context for a child. You are talking about, you are talking about second language. Yeah. In the first language, we believe that the child has got that ability to learn. And no, 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 Child is not the ability only for the first language. The same ability is used with the second language. Except that the opportunity to the second language 
Yeah, honey, man, to go. 